Wow, that was pretty violent. <laughs> Call to order. Uh, Swamp Scott School Committee regular session meeting Wednesday, February 13th, 7 p.m. Um, will we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, Joe, Joe will be arriving any, any time soon. Um, all right, so we can start off with um, public comment. Is there any tonight? No, there's no public comment. Um, so we can move on to uh, For the Love of Learning. Tonight we have a video production of a scene from Macbeth from Miss Thomas. Ms. Caitlin Thomas. Ms. Caitlin Thomas. Welcome. Chair of the uh, department chair of the English department yes. at the high school. Hi. So I will just quick thing about the uh, the assignment. The students were asked to basically in, interpret some in, in an original manner a scene from the bath which we had just finished studying, um, and they came up with some really interesting interpretations. So here's one of my groups. Um, I have Max Scanlon, Riley Scanlon. Autumn LaRiviere, um, Maddie Winkowski, and Ella Slavenmacher. So come on down. Welcome. Say something Welcome. about it? <laughs> um, so our, we did an interpretation of Act 4, Scene 1, which is basically a scene which portrays Macbeth returning to like his sighting of the witches, and he attempts to receive more information to um, like secure his kingship. Yep. All right, let's take it away. You guys can sit down and watch it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, you need to play the video. <laughs> The cat has meowed on three occasions. <laughs> three times, and the guinea pig has whined once. My feline friend yells, it's time, tis time. Round about the cauldron go. <laughs> Throw in a cat's claw and a squirrel's paw. I hate those filthy animals. Let's add some more. The skin of a witch or the finger of a baby born in a ditch. Well, now that was fun. It's finally done. That looks fetch Here, have some treats for your trouble. Be feline today. <laughs> I don't care if you destroy the pillows, rip apart the shoes, ruin furniture, or pee on the bed. We're dogs, I ask you to answer my commands. Answer me what I ask you. Speak. Demand. We will answer. Would you rather hear this from us or our owners? Fetch them or be see them. Put in the feathers of the bird who has eaten her nine eggs. Answer me, you alpha fish. He knows all the fish in the sea. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Be wary of the world. Walk on the hill and see your territory. Think your crime. Whoever you are, you know what I fear. But one bark or one meow, one blub, 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 blub. The first fish will be schooled. If cats had three years, I hear thee. I'm, um, oh, 
Then let Mikruf live. I do not need to be afraid of him. That is impossible. <laughs> Yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Will Bengal's sons ever be king? Seek to know no more. I demand you stay and tell me my fate or you will be cursed. Why sinks the cauldron and what noise is this? Show. 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 You look like Bengal's ghost. Go away. Your crime is to be hissed. Filthy dogs, why are you showing me these kings? Will this keep happening? Another king? I don't want to see this anymore. Yet another appears and shows me a reflection of more kings. I hate the kings of all these territories. Now I see that this is Banquo's posterity mocking me. What? Is this so? Why are you surprised? This is true. Come, fellow loves. Let's cheer next Beth up and show him our tricks. You're kidding. They're gone? Let this moment be remembered forever. Yeah. What are you doing? What do you want? Saw you the weird dogs? No, my lord. Didn't they check with you? No, my lord. They are catastrophic. Don't trust them. I heard something. Who came here? Those with news that guinea pigs said my gruff has gone to the beach. Now when I want to talk the talk, I'll walk the walk. I'm off to raid McGruff's territory and take his prize toys. But no more sights. I don't want to lose sight of my catnip and kitty treats. Bring me to those I seek. Bye-bye. <laughs> you look like you had so much fun doing that and then watching it again. So creative. Yes. It really was. So whose idea was it to use animals? That was Max's idea? And then so whose pets were yeah, they? Yeah, whose animals were they? <laughs> Spread among them. <laughs> Who owns the toddler? <laughs> oh, it's so great how it's so so. One of my kids did did this scene for reenacted it for a, a class here, and I just I love how different this was. Like, and I thought hers was pretty creative, <laughs> but like, like mm -hmm. it's just yeah. awesome because because it's like enough of the text that yeah. Love. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for Great sharing. job, guys. We would have never have an opportunity to see that if you didn't come and share. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So next we have uh, community announcements. So maybe we'll start Joe's with birthday. Joe since it's his birthday. Oh, yeah. oh happy, happy birthday, Joe. birthday to you. <laughs> Spend it. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear Joe. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Why are you here? Oh, um, I don't know. <laughs> Devotion. Dedication. Do you have any comments you want to make? Public comment. Uh, community announcements. I'm sorry. Um, we had the great blue ribbon ceremony. I think I thought that went really well. The kids loved it, um, and all the speakers were really great. Um, and yeah, it was pretty. It was a good time. <laughs> Thanks for saving the day. Oh. The high jump. Yes. Thank wow. you. <laughs> the step team was awesome. <gasps> yeah, they were and, so good. You know, personally, I think we should have had them gone last because. They're just hard to follow. For for any for any group, they're hard to follow. And the I governor feel like was not joking when he the, said he was why not joking. They yeah, are hard to joking. follow, and I'm looking forward to more from them. And I think I know graduation they're going to perform, and maybe they might have another performance before that. Excellent. Great. That's very cool. Ted. Uh, no, just uh, quickly, uh, the snow days. Hopefully, we can get the kids and the faculty out early, especially the seniors. Around time. <laughs> well, the seniors aren't affected by the snow days. Exactly. That's the beauty. That's they why I would have, love some snow days. I know, I just days. wanted it. Snow days would be great. They want the snow days. So they still get out, right. Suzanne? Suzanne? Um, no, I'm happy. We'll talk about the MSBA later. That's our big news. Aaron, do you have anything? I was just going to say that the, I thought the blue ribbon ceremony was, I mean, I feel like I'm proud of the district a lot, you know, 
graduations and plays and events, but this, I think, was the top. That was the tops. Yeah, um, I have to say, I, I, the energy in the room for the Blue Ribbon and the students, like the, just the energy, the culture, the students were awesome, um, the performances. Um, I thought the chorus did, oh is it God, chorale or chorus? Um, they ended it very nicely, though. They did a really beautiful job. So I, I, I was glad to be able to attend that. Um, I also was able to go, my child was in the gr uh, production of Grease yes. School, which I have to say was amazing as usual. Um, the middle school does a really nice job. Uh, Kayla LeClerc was the director. Um, and I love that Mr. Kalishman came kind of out, came out all lightning. four nights, all four performances and wow. did a piece. Didn't I really think you. that's, it was just great. I think it's challenging for kids to join theater sometimes yes. to feel like they can do that. It was just really nice for him to kind of be a part of it too. And, and the eighth graders were amazing. The, yes, and the, uh, the high school's getting some talent. Yeah, they them. really are. It was really a great show. Um, Little known fact, Mr. Kalishman was practicing at every, any given moment in the hallways during the days. <laughs> we have it on videotape. <laughs> well, it was, uh, he definitely got a, a, you know, people were applauding him and it was exciting. So it was very cool. Um, okay, so we're on to superintendent's report. Great, thank you. Um, so I just want to highlight the fact that at our last meeting I spoke about the Greater Boston Parents, Family and Friends of Lesbians and Gays P flag coming out to do the Professional Development Day on January 24th. In addition to that, we did have the community forum on Wednesday evening, February 6th um, in the auditorium about approximately 20 people were in attendance, including a few children. Um, it was a really powerful guest speaker panel. Um, and at the Professional Development Day, there was one speaker, a parent, and at this community forum, there were two parents and um, a transgender woman middle school teacher in Wellesley. And it, um, Ted was there. I don't know if you have anything to add to that event. Personally, I learned a lot. And for the, the parents, uh, particularly to stand up and tell their story, I, it was uh, beaming with confidence and how proud they were. I wish uh, some more people showed up. Yeah, what was most powerful um, and what I remember is um, there was one particular person in the audience that was really crying and said that she was so moved by the panelists' stories and she just didn't understand it because she was here because she wanted to get educated. And um, I think that's the general sense of the people that attended. I've now seen the presentation twice and I continue to learn. And so I um, am scheduling with them an annual community forum because I do think it's important to do this every year. I'd like to do it in October next year so it's the beginning of the year. Um, the highlighted portion of my report tells you that the slide presentation they did is in your folder. Um, it is not for public consumption. The teachers have it, but they've asked that we not distribute it. So it is um, in your folders if you want to take a look at it. So the director of teaching and learning position update is that, as I had said previously, it was posted on January 3rd. The posting closed on January 24th. We had a total of 39 applicants for the position. Um, we have formed an interview committee of Mrs. Julie DeLillo, the Human Resources Director, Latanya Mackey, the Director of Digital Learning, Martha Raymond, Director of Student Services, and myself. Um, there are phone screenings still occurring at this time, but we have approximately 10 candidates for the first round of interviews, which will take place on February 28th and March 4th right now. I just wanted to, again, highlight the National Blue Ribbon Award ce celebration and reception. It was definitely a proud moment for the district and for the community. Um, and I want to really shout out to the administrative team at the high school, along with the students and the staff that helped plan such a spectacular event. I think the planning, I know the planning was daunting, but right down to the red carpet, the t staff walking in, all of the performances, Joseph, you speaking, the student MCs, I just thought it 
I did say at one point I could die right now and be professionally fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop smiling for at least two days. It just was true. a great feeling for our community and our school community to be recognized and as great as we know it is. And I was proud of the students in the audience who were just the energy, as you said, Gargi, was yeah. something I haven't felt for a long time and long overdue for this community. The other um, event that I did attend is Reach Arts had an open house and a tea. Um, it took place on January 31st from 3 to 5. Several members of um, the business office and um, the superintendent's office attended. What was great for me is I've never been in that building and to see the spaces that cool. are available and the third floor, even though it's not um, ready yet. You know, what we were thinking about is every summer we have our uh, leadership retreat, and I w if the Wi-Fi were working there, I would love to have a leadership retreat there and um, have it catered, you know, have the food brought in. But it was, it's really a neat space, and I, like I said, I had nothing to compare it to, but it, they really did a nice job that day having that open house. I wanted to talk about kindergarten information night that Mrs. Raymond ran. It took place on January 29th. It was very well attended. And I just wanted to remind people that Martha Raymond does kindergarten registration differently now. It's in person. It's in the superintendent's conference room at the middle school. It's on Monday and Tuesday, March 18th and 19th from 7.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And I wasn't sure. We have did. another date, too. OK. Like it's on the website so in the you afternoon. Do you want to add anything about kindergarten information night? Um, I think it went really, really well. Um, usually the favorite question is, what school am I going to be assigned to? But that wasn't really the biggest topic of the night. I think it was just people really you know, looking how to have their children be prepared to come. And they're a really, really excited group of um, families that will be joining us next year. Um, so that's exciting. And I think doing registration in person allows us to give a little personal connection to families that have questions. So it really worked well last year. I'm really hoping it'll work well this year. And Alyssa will, will be part of that now, too. It's a lot of work of for you and your team to sit in that room. And But you, the, the beauty is, if people are missing paperwork, it's a face-to-face. -face. Right right. They can bring it in the next day. So I think the packets were much more complete yes. doing it this way. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, that will continue. And last but not least, I have some great news tonight. Um, I. I'm going to take my notes out of order, but I did meet with the Stanley School staff on February 7th in the afternoon and shared this news. And it was supposed to be the same evening that I met with parents and guardians at Stanley, but I ended up meeting this morning uh, to announce that the Hadley School interim principal, Mrs. Kathleen Huntley, is being appointed as the next permanent Stanley School principal beginning on March 18th. update to the committee and to the public that doesn't know the story. So last October, when we were interviewing for Ms. Bebchek's maternity leave, we did form an interview committee. Mrs. Raymond was part of it. Ms. Jennifer Hunt from Clark School, that principal. Ms. Bebchek was part of it. Uh, Mrs. Julie DeLillo, the director of human resources, and Mrs. Marshall was part of it as well. Uh, at the conclusion of the interview process, Mrs. Huntley was unanimously appointed uh, the interim position for Hadley School. Um, I have talked about this this morning, Keiko was there this morning, that this was the longest interview I've ever conducted. It's been three months that she's been, in essence, uh, interviewing for this position. Um, and we're really excited to have her moving over to Stanley and also to welcome Ms. Bebchek back. Prior to coming to Swampscott, she served as principal at the Abbott School, which was a grade three to five school in Westford from to, uh, 2015 to 2018. And prior to that, she was assistant principal at the Abbott and Nabnasset schools, which were K to two schools from 2013 to 2018. Um, before com becoming an administrator, she taught science in all levels, including as an adjunct professor at Merrimack College. So the schedule is this, that Ms. Bebchek is scheduled to return from maternity leave on March 4th. Mrs. Huntley will spend that week both working, working both at Hadley and Stanley schools, transitioning to both, and then will take over at Stanley officially on March 18th. Um, we have also scheduled, as a result of this morning's meeting at Stanley, on March 6th, an evening meet and greet where children will come with their parents 
Mrs. Longen will be there, Mrs. Huntley will be there, I will be there. So it'll be the first opportunity for parents to speak with um, Mrs. Huntley and to get to meet some of the children. Um, I really, really am thrilled to have Kathleen remain on our leadership team. Um, she's a strong voice with lots of experience and um, I'm really excited. So <laughs> congratulations. so much. I am beyond excited to be here. I love school. That's kind of who I am. I love to work and school's my work so it makes every day you know really a very good day. Um, it's been an absolute joy to be working in this district whether I'm involved with leadership or a five-year-old. Um, I can see that decisions are made based on what is in the best interest of students. And when that is the core of what you believe, you make the right decisions. Not that we don't make little mistakes sometimes, but that's what we're supposed to be basing our decisions on. And the direction of this district and the decision making that I've seen this far, I mean, it's true, three month interview, but it kind of goes both ways and I've just loved what I've experienced and what I've seen. You know, Hadley has been an environment where people are collaborative, they're caring, um, committed. There's my three C's, I love alliteration. Um, and there's a real balance with rigor and bringing out the best in students and having fun. And I think that fun, you know, just as, as the students in their performance said, the fun is the root of the learning. If you make it fun, they will come, you know. And, um, it's been a wonderful three months. I'm kind of sad to leave, but I'm excited to be going to Stanley and to be in um, the capacity of principal without the interim piece, even <laughs> though that has been wonderful. Um, I can't thank Superintendent Angelakis and the committee and school committee and everybody I've met. I mean, it has been amazing. I go home and I say, not only is it at the ocean, which was a draw for me, <laughs> I have to admit. Um, it certainly makes the drive worthwhile when your day is full of the goodness, you know, that I've been experiencing. It's just been great. I couldn't be happier. But now I need a little vacation house a little closer. That's what I keep telling my husband. It's like, <laughs> what? That was not in the cards. <laughs> Every now and then I like to keep him on his toes. So. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Thank I look forward you. to meeting you. Welcome. Welcome. Amy, oh. Oh, Todd, get up, get a picture. Amy has requested that you get a picture so right. we can uh, make send it official. to the, right, send it to the reporter. I'm watching us on TV. And that concludes my report. Uh, okay, so we now have the um, school business administrator, Martha. Okay. So this will be the review of the FY20 school budget and uh, then the Thanks. vote. Yeah, so I think the agenda has it a little bit out of order. We're going to do um, the revolving funds uh, first and then uh, the athletic fees and then <laughs> okay. the last thing that we'll do will be the, the FY20 vote. Of course. Yeah. Okay. So at the um, January 23rd, which seems so long ago. Um, I had promised the next presentation would include revolving funds and grants. At that point in time, I, I still didn't have enough uh, information. So the revolving funds that we're going to focus on tonight are ones that we utilize to help offset operating costs. So athletic um, fees, or athletic, the athletic revolving fund, the school building rental fund, extended day, and the preschool program are all uh, funds that help support the operating budget. 
And we're also going to discuss a little bit of the non-resident tuition revolving account that we'd like to establish. And then I'll do a, a quick review of our grants. So back in uh, January, I believe it was January 16th meeting that um, the athletic director, Mrs. Farley, came and um, made her recommendations for fee increases for athletic user fees. And um, the committee tasked her with going back and sharpening her pencil and looking at the budgets and working collaboratively with me to come up with a final recommendation. And so her final recommendation was to introduce at the middle school level a tiered fee structure. Um, and it's really only one tier. It's $200 per sport, except for hockey, which would increase to 375 with no family cap at the middle school. At the high school, um, the fee would increase to $375 per sport, and the family cap would increase to $1,875, meaning the first five sports a family would pay for, but anything after that, incrementally after that, they would not pay at all. We would continue to offer financial assistance to families that need it. Um, we currently use the federal guidelines for free and reduced lunch for um, financial assistance. The fee is waived 100% for any family that qualifies for free lunch, and the fee is waived at 30% for reduced lunch. Um, and of course, the district, we will continue to work with families that request hardship waivers. So the athletic projected revenue, um, I did some modeling. So I did the FY20 revenue model um, based on FY18 participation data. Um, Previously, I calculated an effective discount rate because not everyone pays and people hit the cap. Um, so the effective discount rate was about 21%. Um, so the proposed increase is estimated to generate an additional $44,750. Um, this will close the gap closer to a 50-50 split, which was a, a kind of a goal the school committee had set for us um, back in January, that they'd like the operating budget to fund 50% of the expense associated with our athletic programs and the revolving fund to support 50% of the um, expense. And this gets us closer to that split. As you can see um, in this slide, the split has been as low as 34%, and so it's, it's been creeping up in the right direction, and it's going to be, um, it's estimated to be 48.2% in FY20. Um, just some actual data there for um, the cost of the total cost of running the program. Uh, FY17, it was about 680,000. FY18, it jumped up to 744,000. Um, you know, the difference year over year, um, without going back through the revolving fund to, to identify what it is, I know that in FY18, the hockey team made it very far in the state tournament. Um, that could have contributed to the increase. I also know that there was um, some uniform updates and other things that came into place, so that might have added to the, the increase year over year from 17 to 18. Um, FY19 was budgeted a, a bit low in comparison to what actually was spent in FY18, and FY20 budget is more in line with what we actually spent in FY18. So I am comfortable with the revenue projections and the expense projections at this point in time. Um, our revenue projection is um, 326,000, or actually 361,000, and we're projecting to use 336,000 dollars from the operating fund, or from the revolving fund, which would leave us a little bit of a balance in that revolving fund. You, you never want to budget to use every single penny of revolving fund money, because things can happen. You know, for example, this year, our, Thanksgate, our Thanksgiving Day football game, which is normally a very big revenue generator for us in, in terms of other revenue um, was very poorly attended because of the weather. And, and that was almost a $10,000 loss in revenue. So you never want to budget these to be zero, zero. You want to leave a little cushion for things that happen, the unforeseen. So moving on to school building rental, um, we started this year with a surplus balance of about $21,000. Um, right now, looking at where we are for billing, FY19 compared to FY20, we're down about $10,000 year over year. Um, I did reach out to a few people to try and figure out what's going on. I think there's some events that have happened or some ongoing things that have not been billed yet, so that might be part of what's driving that delta. Um, as I discussed with the Committee of the Whole, I, I am unclear why we're charging custodial fees but not charging them to the revolving fund. So this is one that 
from a standpoint of how it's going to support the FY20 budget, we budgeted to have it support the operating expenses by $35,000 for utility costs. I'm confident that the fund will be able to do that in FY20. I would like to look at what we're charging for fees, who we're discounting, how we're marketing our facilities, because we've got some great facilities here that could be utilized by um, local businesses or community organizers. So I really want to take a deeper dive on this to see what we're doing and, um, and maybe come back later with some recommendations on, on what we should do in terms of fee structure or, or process changes. The extended day program um, operates in our three elementary schools and a program in the middle school. The extended day program helps support the operating budget. We charge about $100,000 a year to offset heat and utilities for the three elementaries in the middle school to this fund. Um, FY19, this current year, we have seen an increase in competition. The Y opened a program. Um, not too far from the Hadley Elementary School, and um, so we have seen a, a bit of a drop off in participation at Hadley. Um, that may tick back up over the course of the year. Um, this is another one that I would like to continue to review the fee structures and expenses, but in terms of what we have budgeted to have support for FY20, I'm comfortable with the $100,000 that we have in there, and I will continue to monitor it, and if anything changes, of course, I'll report back to the committee. The preschool revolving fund. The preschool offers um, three different programs. There, there's a five-day option, a three-day option, and a two-day option with an option to extend the day, which we call Lunch Bunch. Um, so Mrs. Raymond um, does a phenomenal job with the program, and she came up with a proposed fee increase. It's very nominal. Um, you can see on the left of the screen, the current fee for five days is $400 a month or $4,000. It's a 10-month program. It's not a full year. It's not a year-round program. Um, is $4,000. Uh, it's a nominal $200 increase year over year. Um, for the three-day option, it's going to go from $2,400 to $2,520. And for the two-day option, it goes from $1,600 to $1,680. Um, we're not advocating or recommending any change to the lunch bunch structure. So for 12 to 1, um, to have your child stay, it would be $10 per day. It would continue to be $10 per day. And from 12 to 2, it would continue to be $15 a day. As far as looking at the revolving fund, the FY20 budget doesn't, uh, does have the assumption of a small revenue increase. So you can see the revenue budget for FY19 is $100,000. It's $105,000 for next year. Um, the next line there, the non-resident tuition, that is um, funds that we're currently collecting for non-resident students that participate in our in-district programs. So we've done a great job of building capacity in the district with um, uh, programs to support different learning disabilities. And where we have excess capacity and we have neighboring towns that have a child that may need that, or that could do well in that program, um, there's a process for us you know, doing a review and seeing if it's a good fit and accepting them in. Um, we do charge them tuition for that. So right now that tuition uh, revenue is sitting um, on the town side because we did not have prior approval from town meeting to have a non-resident tuition fund, revolving fund. We did budget to have that revenue and have expense go against it in FY19, and we are working collaboratively with the town to uh, make sure that we're um, made whole on that. So at the annual town meeting in May, we will be requesting to have um, town meeting vote to help to approve that non-tuition, non-resident tuition revolving fund. Um, so I did budget to have that next year in FY20. Um, so our assumption is that those students will continue to come to Swampscott um, and uh, that we will be able to offset that revenue with charging some of our expenses for those programs to that revolving fund. So wrapping up revolving funds, um, athletics, there is a new fee uh, rate fee structure to approve, the school building rental one. I do want to review the current process. Um, part of that review will be to look at peer communities, what, what other communities are, are renting out their facilities for. We have a wonderful auditorium here. Are our rates too high? Are they too low? Are we not, um, why are we not attractive if we're not renting that out every weekend to dance recitals from April to June? Um, 
So I want to look at that kind of thing. And then also what's our process for, for billing? Um, you know, uh, are we waiting to the very end to bill? Are we pre-billing? Are we re requiring a deposit? So there's a lot of unknown there for me that I'd like to review. So I propose to come back to the committee with some inf more information on that and we could do a, a mid-year increase or, or wait a full year. Um, same with the extended day program. I'd like to continue to monitor the revenue and expense for that program and determine if the rate structure uh, is, is based on the expense or if there are other things that we should be doing or looking at in terms of the rate structure for that program. And then um, preschool program, oops, I meant to delete that line from the slide, but we've already determined the rate structure for that, so um, we'll be voting on that tonight. And then I already spoke a little bit about the non-resident tuition account. So um, the last slide in this presentation is to talk a little bit about our federal grants, our, our, all of our grants actually. So I, I have them segmented by federal, state, and private. So our federal grants are uh, really our entitlement grants. They're based on our enrollment and our demographic composition. Um, as you can see, our awards year over year for Title I, 18 to 19, or excuse me, 17 to 18, was pretty flat. 18 to 19 jumped up. Um, for FY20, I just assumed a flat, I didn't assume any increase, but more than likely there will be an increase. I just didn't want to be aggressive in terms of budgeting uh, support. Same thing for Title IIA and Title um, IV, well, IVA, I um, actually, I'm not, I don't have visibility on that one, on whether we'll get that money in FY19 or not. Um, the IDEA grant, again, I, I budgeted that to be flat. That really is based on the number of students with disabilities in the district. And uh, same thing with early childhood. I did want to include, you know, uh, Mrs. Raymond suggested this, and I appreciate that, that I wanted to show that there used to be a, a special education program improvement grant, which really was used predominantly for professional development. Um, the first one, the 274 grant, was for our K-12 to or K-22 to population, and the EC grant was our early childhood grant. And both of those have been sunsetted by the state. Um, our, our METCO grant is a state grant. We participate in, in the, the METCO program. Um, as I mentioned the other day at the Committee of the Whole, that, that's one that uh, too often gets uh, reduced for 9C cuts at the state level if, if the state revenue starts to see a shortfall and they have to make 9C cuts. The METCO grant sometimes takes a hit. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic that there won't be any 9C cuts this year and that'll be fully funded, if not a little bit more for next year. But again, I'm, I'm a very conservative person, so I want to budget it at being flat. Um, and then finally, Circuit Breaker. Uh, as we discussed during the presentation on, um, I think it was January 16th, or no, I think it was the 23rd was when we did special education. Um, this is really a, a good look into the future. Um, Mrs. Raymond does a great job of projecting what our costs are going to be in the next year and what percentage of that would be eligible for Circuit Breaker. And this fluctuates greatly based on move-ins, move-outs, um, children aging out of our programs. So right now, at this moment in time, it looks like we're going to be $120,000 less in FY20 for Circuit Breaker, which is great to have that visibility and the budget certainty that we have by having Circuit Breaker in, a year, in arrears. Um, that number could change significantly, we all know, with the population changing. Um, so, but as of right now, it does look like we have um, some work to do in FY21. So I'm going to pause there to allow for questions and comments from the committee and, uh, and some votes, hopefully. <laughs> of athletic fees, I just wanted to reiterate, you did mention it, but I just wanted to say it again because I got some feedback after the January meeting that we might not have been clear on the, the underlying philosophy that as a committee, we have decided that we want the fees and the operat operating budget to be at a 50-50 split. We want to balance how important athletics are to the students and to the high school and the middle school experience, but also understanding the budget issues that we have and so 50-50 was the goal that we had set which is why we're looking at these fee increases. I think that may have, been, may have been missed when we were talking about all the different options. Maybe the why was missing so I just wanted to reiterate. 
Good. So uh, I would just say, Monterey, the, it, fantastic presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As each year in the budget cycle goes on, it seems like we're, we're peeling away another layer of the onion, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. We have a, a fiduciary responsibility to the district, the mm -hmm. children in the district, and we also have to learn to live within our means. I mean, at a 2%, um, we're doing the best that we can. Um, I'd like to see uh, on the on the delta for the billing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's on the radar. Um, yes. And for the ordinary uh, individual off the street, they they do have questions on revolving accounts, stabilization, circuit breakers, and I think it's up to the committee to explain it out to them and 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 piecemeal to them for the they can. Uh, see where we're going and I we close and I uh, I like the uh, the terminology uh, sunsetting <laughs> yeah. um, in regards to some of the, the monies that used to come to us well I and I appreciate your feedback on that I, I I definitely have a philosophy when it comes to revolving funds they should not be growing over time it doesn't mean that you have to spend them down to zero and not carry any money forward um, the federal guidelines for even for our school lunch program is you're allowed to carry three months operating expense into the next fiscal year. The revolving funds that we have don't have um, criteria on how much you can carry forward. You can carry as much forward as you want. I, I really have always had the threshold of you really shouldn't have much more than three months operating expense in there because that allows you the, the, the non-resident tuition one is a perfect example. We're budgeting 225000 next year. If one of those kiddos decides not to come back here, that's going to be a loss of revenue. And to have three months carried forward, it gives us an opportunity to figure out where can we find money to help subsidize what we thought we were going to charge here. So I just feel like that's the best practice. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful to get all of our revolving funds to that case where we're carrying forward a small balance, a reasonable balance, but they're not growing. out in the public too, you know, in the past people have always said, well, you have money, it's in your revolving funds, whatever. You, it, you know, if we're only carrying three months, like you understand that, that yes, it is some security, but but it's not lavish and we're not using it for, I mean, revolving funds by definition can't be used for just anything, but but we're not. Like, Correct, you know, yes. It's a nice, just to, just to have some policies in, and in place around that or some, some of our own rules that we can share out, I think are really helpful yeah. for the public, so. I think it helps give you budget certainty. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So. And I think the non-tuition one is, is overdue and oh will, God, it will answer a lot of yeah, issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes so much sense. Like, you know, Martha spoke to it at, at that financial summit. Like, you know, what's my incentive for taking in the kids if I don't get the money for them? <laughs> which is... Well, which we is, can't incur the expense right. if they require us to hire staff. Right. It's right. just, it makes so much sense that we, we have control of that. No. Yes, sometimes. Yeah, long overdue. Is there is there a plan B if that doesn't get approved by town meeting? Uh, <laughs> no. There's there's not a plan B. I mean, I, I think well, we would have to figure out um, how to work collect collaboratively with the, with town, the town if it was not approved. But right. I I can't imagine why the town meeting members would not I, I uh, consider it and approve it. It seems like a rational. Um, I was just going to mention that, so in terms of the athletic fee increases, um, I, I do feel that the 375 for hockey, I feel like it's not high school level, so I just don't feel like it should be 375, but I know that the committee had discussed, I mean, we do need to increase it based on, I mean, the, I think we're losing like $11,000 <laughs> on the sport, um, but I do, I do feel that, I'm not sure that that's the, the number I would, I feel is... It's not an equivalent because once you get to high school, you're paying 375 for for it. I just think this is my opinion on that. Um, and I also think um, Martha, there was we were just talking about the preschool and what a fantastic program it is, obviously, and um, just what incredible rates you're able to give. And so um, we don't know if we can. I understand that you know it's set for next year already, but maybe like kind of delving into that a little bit more to understand if there's any possibility of increasing that, because that's quite a bargain, I think. 
um, based it, on it is it is although you know there are you know there, I, we're finding more and more families who are having barriers to entry to, to get into preschool in our community okay and we don't have any most of our private programs to, don't accept vouchers um, and so we are we do have financial aid for families not you know that happens after they apply but I do think it might help more families be able to access preschool too so I'm kind of cognizant of that also um, that it can be difficult but we can definitely look at it um, and then also the um, rental fees as you were speaking of do you know when we would be looking at that like in the fall are you trying to gonna do a deeper dive by before next I, I was hopeful year. that I could have a deeper dive for maybe April or May to have a fee increase effective for July 1st okay I, I, I would recommend increasing the fees either July 1st or January 1st um, it doesn't make much sense to, to you know arbitrarily increase them in the middle of the year but um, so I, I would pick one of those two points to communicate out a fee increase you also want to make sure that you're communicating out the increase to groups that have been using it so that they're not caught off guard a lot of them are developing their budgets right now too so um, that's I'm trying to be mindful of, of who our uh, who our stakeholders are and who's using it so no I think I'm really interested in looking at that process because I've heard a lot of feedback about it in general and I think it's just been done a certain way for so long and so it'd be kind of nice to kind of take a look at that I will process. add you to my stakeholders to interview yes <laughs> um, but also in thinking about a new school like I, I think that'd be something interesting to look at because the rental gym space is so tough in our community right I mean we're uh, community sports organizations are having to go outside of Swamska, right? So as we're looking to build um, a new school, it might be something to really look at that. Maybe at the idea exchange I was, on March yes. 9, 10, and 12. Don't go steal out. our thunder. But maybe I'm just saying, like, you know, those are, those are things that would be so right. great if people come from, let's say, soccer and say, you know, we don't have anywhere to play futsal or indoor soccer in Swamska. Can you, when you build that new gym, can, you, can we talk to you about some requirements that might meet our needs? Like that, that would be great feedback. <laughs> no, I think that's no. great. So I think that's something to, we'll, we should put out there because I've heard, I think it's just yeah, really nice. challenging and yeah. going out, outside of town would be nice to yeah, kind not of. Yeah, even, not even just gym. I mean, if there's something else this community needs, right. you know, some other space need that we're not meeting with the, with the current buildings we have, you know, we have this opportunity to think about, mm -hmm. you know, what that space could be. Um, so that's all my questions. Thank you. It was an excellent presentation. Does anyone else have any other discussion before we vote? We're just voting on preschool and athletic right now. Yes. yes. We're going to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're doing all of it tonight, right? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. She's right got now. More, she's yeah. got budget yes. stuff to, before we vote on that. So. Okay. Um, so I'll entertain a motion for the athletic fee increase. Um, for the middle school, it would be $200 per sport, except for hockey, which would be $375, with no family cap for middle school sports. And at the high school, it would be $375 per sport, um, with an increased family cap to um, $1,875 um, for the FY20 budget. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Opposed? <laughs> okay, motion passes. Um, so next is um, entertaining a motion for preschool tuition increase um, for the proposed fee of a five-day program is going to be four hundred and twenty dollars. How am I reading this? Four, a, month or four. a month or four thousand two hundred dollars per year. year. Uh, Three-day program is two hundred and fifty-two dollars a month. Uh, or $2,520 a year, and the two-day program or $168 per month or $1,680 per year. Um, I'll, can somebody make a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Motion passes. Okay, so do you want to? It's the Martha Show. Let's continue. <laughs> so. Uh, I want to finalize uh, the FY2020 operating budget. So um, just want to recap a little bit that this year's superintendent uh, recommended budget was organized into five different cost centers 
which represent the high-level program categories that comprise the district budget. So there's the administration, general education, special education, school facilities, and other district programs, which includes health services, athletics, extracurricular activities, and district-wide technology. Um, we will request that the school committee adopt the cost center approach for budget approval, and it's one of your items to vote on tonight. Um, and so going forward, if we needed to move funds within a cost center, um, perfect example this year was where we had a, a special education program migrate from one elementary school to another. We wouldn't have to come to the committee to get approval to just move the budget within special education. But if we were to move funds from one cost center to another, it would be brought before this board for consideration and approval. So the superintendent's recommended budget did exceed the budget guidance of 2% by $42,000. Um, uh, we went back and sharpened our pencils and the underlying assumptions for heat and utility expenditures were reviewed and revised to reflect a more accurate estimated cost. Um, one of the first things I did when I, when I joined here was to sign uh, an agreement with National Grid to do an uh, energy study at the middle school and high school. So there are some projected cost savings from those two programs that we entered into. And, um, and based on historical trend, uh, really I got some guidance from some of my counterparts at the town hall that really felt like we had over budgeted in those, those lines specifically. So that's where we went to to get the $42,000. So the budget is now within guidelines. Uh, it's a 2% increase, or $580,000. Um, the leadership team obviously will continue to look at ways to create efficiencies wherever possible. Um, as I mentioned, the underlying assumptions for heat and utilities were reviewed. So this is a revised cost center for facilities. All the other cost centers are still the same as what was in the original budget book, um, with the exception of this one. And as you can see, um, you know, the budget did increase significantly from 2019 to 2020. Um, but when looking at 18 and 20 comparatively, um, it, it is within the same guidelines. So just to recap the budget timeline, you know, January 16th, we had the overview. January 23rd, we went through the remaining cost centers. Um, tonight, it's uh, open for questions and the school committee vote. So once the school committee votes tonight, the budget will become theirs. It will become the school committee's recommended budget, which will be presented to the town administrator. Um, he will incorporate that into his overall town budget that he will present to um, the finance committee. Um, school committee budget will be presented to finance committee in March. I would expect that we would be part of an agenda and be invited to participate in that meeting. Um, the town meeting has final voting authority in May. So I don't know if there are any questions about the budget, <laughs> FY20. I have, a, I have a question. It's probably, it's just procedural maybe. But if we vote to adopt cost centers, um, are, we, are, we, uh, are we putting cost centers on the warrant or is it still a, like a single line item? Still, For the town meeting, it's yeah. still a single line item. All right. And the last vote tonight is to vote it as a, as a total budget. That's a good so, question, so thank you. <laughs> just, just, it's occurring yeah. to me, like, you know, I know last year someone stood up and asked us to, you know, not fund that school. And then I was thinking, it's probably a lot easier for people to ask us to not fund one cost center. <laughs> you know, and I just don't, I mean, that would just be the That's work. just for internal housekeeping. Right. And yes, absolutely. It makes so much sense right. for us. It makes so much sense to have that kind of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do we have any so questions just or, or you don't? curiosity, has anyone gotten emails from people, like the community with questions? Because I haven't and I'm I haven't I'm either. Sort of surprised that um, I haven't it's been either. so quiet. I mean, I, I, just, I mean honestly, I don't think any of us are thrilled with 2%. I mean, uh, you know, in a perfect world we would like more because we could do more. But I think it's great because even at 2% we haven't cut any programming. Exactly, and, exactly. And I think that's really that's the most important part, you know, because we have a really strong, we have some really strong programming right now and we're not cutting it, so, cutting it. so that's pretty great. Yeah. I haven't heard, I haven't just received curious. any emails. Just I think there's been some discussions around like athletic stuff, but other than that, not yeah. really. I haven't had any community members reach out to me either with questions. Okay. 
I, I just had one on the, the special education aspect, but we pretty much revolved, resolved in a couple of parents uh, speaking very highly of Martha's program. Yeah, it was all the staff. <laughs> okay. Yes. So it is. We should have later too. It's the teacher. If there was a problem, it would be yours. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So we're going to now entertain a motion to create the following cost centers for the FY20 budget. Um, administration, general education, special education, school facilities, district-wide programs. Uh, someone to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? We're supposed to vote that? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. So now we're entertaining a motion to vote on cost center administration in the amount of $1,674. No, $1,674,532. Can someone make a motion? We'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? No Unanimous. Now entertaining a motion to vote on cost center general education in the amount of $15,515,875. Can someone make the motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? <laughs> Unanimous, thank you. Now entertaining a motion to vote on cost center special education in the amount of $8,900,095. Somebody make the motion? I'll make the motion. Oh, can I I'll second? second. All in favor? Motion passes. Now entertaining a motion to vote on cost center school facilities in the amount of $2,254,630. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Motion passes. Now entertaining a motion to vote on cost center district-wide programs programs in the amount of one million two hundred and seventy five thousand two hundred and seventy dollars somebody make a motion, motion. I'll second. all in favor motion passes oh. final motion is to vote on the total school budget in the amount of twenty nine million six hundred and twenty thousand four hundred and three dollars Ted wow. want to make the motion Ted I'll make the motion <laughs> I'll second all in favor Motion passes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's nice job. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have to like read that or anything, right? I was just because it was kind of Great. That's really okay. Cool. So next up, we have the chair report, and she is not here, and I have nothing to report. Therefore, I'm going to move on to the tri-chair report, which was apparently canceled. So we're going to move on to the subcommittee, which is the school building committee update, which Miss Suzanne Wright will enlighten us. Do you want me to go back up? Or not. Yeah, I think oh. <laughs> I yeah, you have that nice presentation. <laughs> or Martha Cyber will be enlightening us. <laughs> <So. laughs> nice turf well, Martha, wor Martha worked on, Martha worked on okay. um, the presentation uh, that, yeah, that, that we gave before, yeah. sort of a little updates to it. Okay. Okay. All right, so continuing on. <laughs> so uh, Mrs. Wright and I had the opportunity uh, to go witness the MSBA board meeting in action today. And so we're very happy to report back to the committee on what's going on with, um, with the new school. So wanted to do a little bit of an update. Want to talk a little bit for people who are new, um, what MSBA is, so a little MSBA 101, um, what's happened so far and really what's next. Uh, so MSBA is the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Um, they are a quasi-independent government authority that were created back in 2004. Um, they work with local communities to create affordable, sustainable, and energy efficient schools across Massachusetts. Um, they're overseen by a seven-member board, um, and the staff is led by Mr. McCarthy, who is the chief executive, and chief executive officer and executive director. Um, MSBA employees are focused on achieving MSBA's mission of partnering with communities to support the design and construction of educationally appropriate 
flexible, sustainable, and cost-effective public school facilities, which definitely describes what we want to do here in Swampscott. I think, I think for more information about the MSBA, it's really, if, if people want more, their website's really, really very comprehensive, and um, it's a great place to go for, for, your, for your information and some clarity about schools that are being built around Massachusetts, sort of like the costs of those schools and, and what's actually getting built in all these different communities. They have, they have so many facts and figures up there that it's worth, it's worth everyone you know, that's interested to, to look at that. Yeah, I would second that. It, it is a robust website yeah. with a lot of tools. Um, you know, Mrs. Wright and I were talking. It's a very choreographed dance when you work with MSBA to build a building. So they're choreographing the dance, but I feel like we're picking the music. <laughs> and, and so that, that's where our responsibility comes in. So um, just kind of a, a high level look at the MSBA building process. Um, you know, there's an eligibility period, forming the project team, feasibility study. Um, we're moving into the feasibility study in terms of the schematics for this. So very happy to report that at today's board meeting, the MSBA board voted unanimously to move Swampscott Public Schools uh, into the phase module two, which is the feasibility study. So we've got a lot of work to do in the next 60 to 90 days. Um, MSBA uses a very specific proc uh, procurement process with standardized forms and templates. Uh, so we are gonna work together with the team to um, find and secure an OPM to help guide us through the next stage of this process. Um, the, o the OPM, the Owner's Project Manager, uh, we will recommend an OPM after our interviews and, and going through the process, the, RF, uh, the RFS process, which is a request for, um, I don't know what the S stands for. I mean, services. <laughs> thank you. Um, the Owner's Project Manager Panel Review Board is comprised of 11 people. So we'll go before the board with our recommendation and the board will, it, it's very choreographed. Once, once we get there with who we're picking, I can't imagine that the board wouldn't approve it because um, there's a lot of back and forth conversations prior to going before the They're panel. They're all sort of existing in the state. That's what exactly, the state is, right? Yeah. There's very there's very um, stringent requirements for them. I mean, there's yeah. it's not right. just anyone can have this job. So those people are already you know vetted and right. qualified. Exactly. Is that the OPM? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Um, after completing module two. After that will come the feasibility study and schematic design, a little more information about that. Um, but w saving the best for last, we really wanted to promote the idea exchange. Um, there was great success with the idea exchange that they did back in December. Um, we'd like to try and replicate that um, and, and really invite community members to come down um, and, and share their thoughts and their wisdom and their experience and, and their feelings with us. So. It is going to be happening on Saturday, March 9th from 10 to 12.30. Uh, it's gonna be here at the high school and um, we really, really welcome people to come and participate. So, thank you. <laughs> and do you want, from school committee, you want everyone there for school committee represent to I mean, listen think, or what is your? I, I think that it would be, it would be great to, I, I think that we'll have facility, we're gonna have five breakout sessions to be determined. I mean, we have some ideas and, and we're gonna have some facilitators leading those sessions to try to, you know, maybe ask some critical questions to start discussions and get people brainstorming and sharing their thoughts and concerns and ideas and all that stuff about, about different aspects of the building. But, but I think that, you know, I hope the superintendent, she's, she's gonna be there just sort of roaming and listening in all the rooms. Mm -hmm. And I think, it, I think it's in all of our best interest to hear what the community's saying. So if you're around, you know, you don't mm -hmm. necessarily have to facilitate anything, but you could participate or, or just listen listening. because I think, I think like, you know, we heard, we heard last time at the last vote, you know, we, Pam, the superintendent convened a task force, right? And a lot of people on that task force, um, you know, want a new school, but weren't for that option or, or, you know, there was a whole bunch of controversy and, and, you know, we learned from that task force that we really, that, that people want to be heard mm -hmm. and not just listen to, but really want to be heard. And, and I think this is our opportunity to, you know, like Martha was saying, it's, it's a choreographed dance, but, but we do get to pick the music still. So the more people that, that give us, you know, a playlist, the better, right? So that we have, 
there, there, we have so many decisions to make and, and none of them are made yet. And the more people that give us input, the, the better our decisions are gonna be. Gonna I just wanna point out too, Mrs. Wright had reached out to the previous task force members to see if they wanted to participate or facilitate. So we brought that group back yeah, there's in. Yeah, there's a few oh, that that's great. So that's really nice. A few that have volunteered to help. Yes. So okay. I, I just think like, I think that, um, I think Excellent. our goal really is to like, you know, everyone says like, well, you have to do whatever the MSBA says you have to do. Well, right now the MSBA, you know, our options are rebuild Hadley, you know, so have the same thing again. So maybe there's people that think that's what the best option is. Make a K through five school, you know, a new one for half the population in town and then make another one down the road somewhere. Maybe, maybe that's a great option. One giant K through four building that solves most of our problems at once. Maybe that's an option people like. And everyone gets to sort of weigh in on what option mm -hmm. they like because it's not set in stone yet. And, and people have to let us know what, what compromises they're willing to make. I mean, we have a district vision that has a first priority of educating grade levels together. You know, a second priority of moving fifth grade down to the elementary school, and a third priority of having as few transitions as possible. So if you wanna vote for, um, you know, just renovating or redoing Hadley, we're sacrificing priority one, two, and three for that. Right. You know, so, so people, we, we do need to understand from people like what they're willing, like where, where's the balance, you know? And I think the more discussions we have, the more, the more we're gonna find where that balance is for the most amount of people. So, so there are still, you know, plenty of discussions to be had <laughs> about, about all sorts of stuff from, you know, just everything, <laughs> just everything about the building, even though there are, even though the MSBA does have some parameters, there still is plenty to discuss. <laughs> Okay, well, I just think, yeah, let us know what you, obviously, would love, yeah. we should be attending, be but there. let us know what we can do. Yeah, there's a subcommittee working on it, so. Okay, uh, great. Yeah, so I think. I think at a minimum, we should post it as a school committee meeting so that any, anyone who can come can come that day and there wouldn't be a, a you know, a. Right. Um, issue. No break in the law. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Open meeting law. Open meeting law. Gotcha. Uh, Consent agenda. I think consent agenda. Okay, so the consent agenda is designed to expedite the handling of routine and miscellaneous business of the district. The school committee may adopt the entire consent agenda with one motion at the, at the request of any committee member. Any items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda for discussion. So tonight we have uh, regular session minutes from January 23rd, 2019. Um, and warrants 19 through 30 and 19-31. So is there any, can I make a motion? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Is there any discussion? I just, I haven't seen, I haven't, I haven't signed the warrants. They haven't been passed around, just FYI. I saw them. Okay. Oh, I think they're under here. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> My bad. I didn't sign them yet either. I can hand those down. Any discussion? No. no. Um, all in favor? Okay, that passes. Well, it is 8 10. Crazy. And uh, <laughs> we look the like we're ready to adjourn. So, can I uh, have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Oh. <laughs> Ladies first. I'll make a motion. So, so I'll do you second? I second, sure. Okay, all in favor? Passes. Thank you, Gardens.